Uh, let's see, the name Rudy's, um, boy, that, that's something that we struggled with right before we were opening. <laughs> Here's the real story. So we were, trying, we were playing around trying to uh, come finalize what we were going to go with, what name, and we had a handful of names, and there was a graffiti crew of kids that were around, they were really awesome, who did the first art in the first shop. We're sitting there watching them, we're just amazed at how great they were, and we were coming up with names and throwing out all these names we could use. We asked Romero, you know, what do you think we should name it? And he just, he looked at us with this blank stare on his face and he was like, Rudy's. And we're like, yeah, I, I guess, but why? You know, what is Rudy's? And they're like, oh, Rudy's from Fat Albert, you know? Like, we always say we're going to go out and be Rudy for the day. And that means we're going to go out and have a carefree day. And he just spray painted in the middle of the mural, Rudy's. What are you going to do? Now it's tagged up on the mural, right? So we painted the window Rudy's and it's just stuck. Seattle becoming known at that time period in the, in the early to mid 90s, I think happened for a few different reasons and so on. Obviously the thing that, that, that most people identify with is, is the music um, scene that was happening here. Everything was about live shows and bands and everybody was in bands. Where in the 80s it was all about art and now everybody had left the art scene and moved right into music and there was just bands coming left and right and venues popping up and um, it, was, it was a frenzy. From a creative standpoint, I think the combination of Seattle and the Northwest being gray and then also being kind of just tucked up in the Northwest and so on, you get a, a more inward kind of point of view. Um, you're indoors more. You, um, I, I, I really think that that did have an effect of the foundation of sort of music and creativity. You know, that was a time of nirvana. And that was a time of people trying to do something different. It was a time of grunge. This is back in the day when there were six of us living in a five-bedroom house. We were each paying $100 a month for rent. People kind of came together because there just wasn't a lot of people, you know, and so on. So there was probably like 300, like really, like, like uh, kind of crazies, you know, at that time. And so you kind of needed to come together. This is, you know, pre-internet, pre... -internet, pre everything so it was a subculture that didn't really care about what everyone else was doing. I mean generally if you were slightly into any kind of alternative culture or however you want to define it and within a certain age range you know you knew everyone else that was into weird shit within a certain age range. It was kind of exciting I'd have to say there was all sorts of new businesses popping up young people were starting businesses in buildings and on streets that we hadn't previously gone to. They call it now the Pine Pike Corridor, but kind of the mid to late 80s, it was really kind of a wasteland. It was a four block radius here on Pine Street, just where everybody was going. Everybody was living here, everybody was eating here. Pike Pine was kind of this, you know, in-between area. It was a little rough. None of us knew what we were doing. We were all young. But there were restaurants being opened up and barbershops being opened up. Everybody's businesses were just kind of I don't know, pulled together in a, in a, you know, like funky, inexpensive way. So it became this circle, really, of, um, of different businesses and different employees of the businesses really just exchanging services. The idea wasn't even really, I don't think, to open a barbershop. I think it was more of opening a community center, like this place, this gathering place. It was really the right idea at the right time. Part of the inspiration came from such a simple um, concept that like when you wanted to have a haircut, that when you woke up that morning and were like, oh, I really want a haircut, you could just go and get a haircut. You don't have to like make an appointment and wait three weeks and go through this sort of like um, fussy kind of experience. Um, really was, felt right. I didn't look at numbers, not, didn't look at like how much would it have to be to pay rent. We just did it. It was almost like an art project. We're like, oh well, if it worse happens, we close the doors. I remember a couple people saying like, that will never work. Like a barbershop, like nobody goes to barbershops anymore and certainly women don't go and you know, just it's, it's people just won't understand that. And that always stuck with, with me because from the day we opened it, people got it. It was an instant hit. It was a new concept. Hey, old man barbershop, it's not a salon. It took them a little bit of time to kind of grasp the concept, but it definitely was amazing. What it did is allow people to get a haircut for cheap, hang out, and feel like they were part of a community. 
So it started out as a barbershop. It became a community, but really it was much more about an idea, an idea that we could all come together and have a really good time. Rudy got soul. Rudy got soul. And we didn't start out knowing that we had a growth plan, but back then, once one shop filled up, we had to build another. Capitol Hill had gotten so busy that we were open 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And then we opened up in Fremont, which was an immediate hit. By the time we opened up our university store, I think I really realized that Rudy's was gonna be on a roll. A lot of them came like right after one another. Like, so it's like, it was just like, bam, bam, bam. So over the years we'd been growing and we were opening up, I think our seventh store, when um, Alex, the man that he is, got a call from Andre Belaz, who owns, who's a hotelier in New York and Los Angeles. And Andre had asked us to become part of the scene of what he was trying to create at the Standard Hotel in Los Angeles. What first emerged at the Standard in Hollywood was, was not so much a barbershop as a whole experience. I'd say it's fair to say that it was a collaboration between what we imagined for the hotel and what they were naturally already doing. And we kind of, this new hybrid uh, emerged out of it, which I think is just right for, for the hotel and for any hotel, actually. A lot of our stylists come from salon backgrounds where they want to get out of, they want to get out of the typical salon. They're looking for something different. They're looking for something maybe less high maintenance, and they're looking for something a little more creative. And so they come to Rudy's, they can express themselves, they can live another life, they can have other things going on in their life. They can be an artist, they can be in a band, they can take six months off to go on tour. We encourage that. You get people from all walks of life in here, you know, you hear the most, you know, you'll, you'll hear the craziest stories from people and it, it keeps the job very interesting. You know, people will tell their barber things they won't tell their therapist. You know, the music, what goes on the walls, all those kind of things are things that the, uh, the employees just do. The owners are always looking to make things community-based and to look for things that are come organically to each shop. And that's why you'll see such a variance in the way our shops look. Detail's important and I think it, where it comes from is more from a, a space of um, inspiration and so on. You know, maybe you're in a flea market or an old vintage shop and you see some little element or something that you're like, oh, that's a way they did it then and it's kind of interesting. And both Wade and I are always filing um, visual things that you kind of put in a folder and so on. There's always a little collection of ideas that you're waiting to then like kind of deploy on something. There's certain points in times when we're inspired by, by different artists, different pieces of music. A lot of times in our stores you will see these murals that were painted you know years ago or these art pieces that were put up years ago by at the time were up and coming artists. Yes, we want something interesting for people to look at on the wall and we, we appreciate what the, what the artist actually does, but in a way it's more about the narrative and the dialogue. It's more of an appreciation, like we like their sphere of influence and so it's more um, of kind of like bringing and broadening the kind of community and family around the shops. Base was a really natural thing for Alex and I to do because we're project whores. We love we love to create and do something new. After having done Rudy's and having you know gotten our feet wet with that kind of business service and and being able to sort of take care of people and take care of the community, um, it gave us the confidence then to consider to do the hotel. We knew people were they wanted just different. They didn't want cookie cutter things. They wanted something that has some soul. And so our goal with the Ace was to do something nobody else had really done. We had no hotel experience and, and no um, uh, understanding of the right way or the wrong way to do it. We just did it like what we were into. And there's a na naivety that's like served us well in a sense and so on because we just kind of were doing it our own way. Every room being different or the experience in every room being different was really hard. I mean, most hotels, they look at one thing and this is what they're going to do in every single room where we had to design and, you know, shop for vintage pieces for every single room. And, but that's what we wanted, that's what sets us apart. Getting your hair cut at Rudy's is a lifestyle. And it wasn't thought out, it wasn't like, oh, let's have a game plan and let's sell this lifestyle where, you know, people are gonna be lulled into this 
sense of community. It just is that, always was that, and remains that. In many ways, we're like a family-run business. Our approach to business is, you know, it's, it's, everything comes down to people. I think it, at the core of everything that we do, um, it, it kind of starts and ends with the, with the community.